Uh, today in the shop, I try to share some information on how I've been able to avoid stone chipping things like paint, the clear plastic lenses that go over some of the lights, the running lights on a motorcycle, various other things. I had good information from Dave Midgley that I shared, among other people that have contributed into this. John Pothia had an excellent idea of how to upgrade these lights that we have on the bike. I did a uh, a swap of the lights on a previous video and I showed how to make the patterns and how to install the material among other things on this video and actually by the end of the video I realized there's a oh, there's a ton of other uses for this that I haven't even uncovered yet we'll be doing more of this in the future and I also showed I did a little experiment on the plastic that covers these lights on the buff and wheel to see if you could recover stone scratches from it and I'll, I'll save that for the very end of the video. And I shared, because we're in the middle of a terrible storm, how I sealed up the basement, and it looks like it worked pretty good. But today is one of those days where I don't know how this is going to play out, because they're predicting rain by lunchtime and a flood watch. And I don't know. It doesn't look like rain out there now. So I'm going to try to get a short ride in. Now, little did I know as I got the bike ready that it outside... The sky was getting darker and darker, and for, for one of the very rare times, the weatherman was right. And I was disappointed because I like to try to get a ride in on every day possible, and it, it's just me. I just want to get these rides in while I can. Winter's coming, but today was not to be. So I always have my alternative plans, and today I wound up uh, sharing, I think, what some good information about stone chips and about protecting the bike before you get a stone chip in it which is the best of all but I still was right at the end I still thought I'd get a ride and but the weathermen won this and they won it big time too really big time okay you guys it's supposed to rain today so I hope you don't get wet stay underwater so you don't get wet so Karen just told me it'd probably be a good idea to wait a couple hours we're we're in like 90% chance of rain mm. I don't want to have to clean the bike again. Once a day is enough for me. So anyway, we're going to hang out a little while, have a couple extra cups of coffee, and then see if the weather gets any better. We'll have to play this hour by hour. So while I'm waiting out the weather, I thought I'd recap this. The steel lines and the brand new EBC discs have really worked out perfectly. The pucks are bedding in real nice. They're just under 300 miles on that. On the new rotors, they're bedding in beautifully. That couldn't have worked out better. And by the way, all this stuff is on our channel. You type in my name in quotation marks and whatever subject you want to see. 2,500, almost 2,500 videos. Rear line was a lot easier of a job, but between the front and the back being done now, now I, I really feel confident that these brakes are going to, if I ever have to uh, avoid running over a turtle or something, they'll save my bacon or save the turtle. So again, a final check of the weather here, I don't know. It's still pretty cloudy and crappy out. Jets are still going over the house, dropping jet fuel on my roof. So an hour later, by the time I got everything done around the house, and <laughs> it, the whole plan for the day changed. And it changed quickly. Not going out in this. So everything's back in the garage. We're going to make a plan. And I have a couple other little projects to work on today. Makes me sad to see the last couple zinnias of the year. Uh, Nanda Navola, thank you. From that one plant you gave us, we have, we have zinnias all year long. And rain. And it's amazing how one hour in a day can change from a beautiful day to pour and rain. Glad I wasn't out on the road either. So even the birds agreed. Where the hell did all this rain come from? Who ordered this rain? God, my bird seeds are getting wet. Lunch is served, guys. Lunch is served. Hey, you might, you might really uh, appreciate this. Of course, we haven't had a lot of rain in well, a couple weeks anyway. The pond was really down. Well, what I managed to do, and I wanted to show this. I don't know. If, I know Truck Holtzapel has a pond. Other people have it. I had to fix this gutter that collects the rain off a gutter, sends rainwater, not city water with chlorine, out into the pond and 
For the first time in a long time, the pond is filled right to the top with nature's best rainwater. So in my life, I always have these days where the weather changes dramatically and quickly. Today is one of them. And I always have a list of projects. I want to explain what today's little project is. Now recently, I don't know how many, maybe it was a week ago or two, I replaced one headlight on this. Now, because of where the headlights are, they're down low and they're LEDs, they do take a beating from the uh, stone chips and in the winter the salt. And so what I did, I of course just went and bought another pair of lights, but John Pothier, and thank you John for another very useful idea, I remember when John was restoring his Corvette, he told me about this material, and I got some from Dave Midgley that protects against stone chips. Now, I made a video. In fact, it's still on there. The front piece of the R1, that has got this clear vinyl material that when it gets all chipped up and full of road salt and everything, I just peel it up and put another piece on. But I still have a, a nice amount of that, and so what I'm going to do is and taking John's advice, put a little, that little clear vinyl over the headlights. Now there was a time, I remember I have it on video, in fact, when I, I had the magnetic tank bag, and this is a good tip, this is a really good tip. The magnetic tank bag, after a while, now that magnetic tank bag was quite a few years old, the magnets were wearing through and it, it was starting to chew up the paint. There were several magnets at several places. And I put a piece of that clear vinyl on here, just where the magnets were and a piece back here. And, and for the time that I was using that magnetic bag, it served the purpose. Now, I'm done with it. I have the Jivy bag. What I did, I heat gunned the material off, and inside, not one scratch in the paint. So that clear vinyl material is really good stuff. Now, a lot of people don't know this, and I'm just, just for, for interesting things. I made this piece for the, for the back seat of the R1. It's a piece that's made it's actually made from wood. <laughs> I know nobody believes that until I take the key and take it off. But anyway, one of the things that's good about this, if you're prone to doing this, and I am, at, you, you, put, you get a boot scratch. I call it a boot scratch. Well, what I do, because I put so much paint on there, I, I just buff the boot scratches out if I get any on there. Or whenever I let somebody else sit on a bike and they scratch it. My grandson jumps on a bike all the time and he scratches it. Well, a good idea for this is, if you have the same problem, to put wherever you, that scratch happens to be, just put a piece of that clear vinyl, and it really, it, it actually is beautifully shiny, and if you can get the edge around the edge nice, it really works great. A lot of people don't know. They think, oh, he bought a Yamaha part. Oh, how cute. Nope, it's wood. <laughs> See, they don't know that. Now, it's not ordinary wood. It's called Nomex, and it's, it's balsa wood end grain with composite on both sides, and it's very expensive material. This piece of material was probably 50 bucks, but I had it from doing other projects, and that, that's one of my unique parts. That, To be honest, I don't know, I don't remember if that's posted up when I did some of the work on this bike, if I posted that video on YouTube, or it was just a separate video, but it's wood. Next time you see the bike in real life, you wonder, that didn't come from Yamaha. Now, I do remember Jose when he had the black, the 1100 Honda that he traded to Pete for the BMW. I remember the first time I saw the bike, and I, I saw it, and it had like black carbon fiber pieces of material at various places that are prone to pick up stone chips. Now, so this is, and, and I understand why he did it, because people that buy and sell bikes, when you go to sell it, you want it to look brand new. So if you're the same way people put clear plastic vinyl on seat covers and, and then they sell the car, they take the vinyl off. And, you know, years ago they did anyway. I don't know if people do that now, but I haven't bought a new car in 15 years. So, but here's the point. If, if you are prone to like I am, and I know these forks do have some stone chips in them. I always touch it up with a little drop of paint and buff it out two, three days later. But if you don't want to do that and you take a piece of this clear material that I'm going to show and just put it right up along the front of the fork leg. Maybe up around here would be another spot that would take a beating. Now, that, that just becomes one other thing. You, yeah, you could buy that carbon fiber, but I prefer the look of, and I clear, there's no look at all. It's just shiny. And the trick is with all this vinyl is to bury where it ends. 
if you can find a way to bury it, you're, you're way ahead of the game. Now getting back to our GS, and this is the ongoing project of the winter that I have not gotten a solution. I've gotten hits and hints and tips from a lot of people, but I really haven't made a decision yet. What I thought might be a solution, the old magnetic bag, I could cut it in half so that I could put the new bag with the jivvy mount on a piece of wood with a jivvy mount inside and the magnets would hold it on. It starts to get too complicated, so I've kind of abandoned that until I feel comfortable doing it. But all the times I've been riding this bike, and I do ride this bike a lot, I, I really don't have, since I don't have the magnetic bag, I don't have that, the thing that I really, I really do enjoy having is that radar detector and the spare battery when it really gets, we're gonna be riding when it's really cold. So this is an ongoing thing. I hope somewhere down the road I have a solution, but as of now, no solution. Now, one thing that's nice, this is really a nice feature of this bike. I, I didn't realize it in the very beginning. Before I had bought the bike, I was looking at YouTube at people comparing different bikes, and the one guy that compared it, he jokingly said, oh, you need to have a windshield here because bugs get on here. Well, you know, I got 10,000 miles. I don't see any bugs. Well, simple reason. I clean it all the time. But also, I was worried these were going to take a beating. These are, these are like soft plastic. So I said, if I start to see these getting chewed up, it'll be a relatively simple thing to put that clear vinyl on them because I don't want to have to take the whole thing apart to replace that plastic at some point in time. And keep in mind, where I ride, maybe where you ride too, there's stones in the road, and as winter's gonna, coming upon us, it's going to have, they salt the damn roads, and keeping that stuff off the bike, I want to ride every time I possibly can, except for today, of course, we're pouring rain out there, but all of these little things that you think about, every one of them makes the bike stay new longer. So this is what happens every day of my life. It starts out one way, the weather changes, Karen has some different things to do, Friends call with things they want to do. My neighbor can't get his lawnmower started even though it's electric. <laughs> Every day is a little bit different than the day before. So we're going to do some of that clear vinyl today down in the shop. So what I wanted to show is this is a brand new light. It's now to spare. And these are from AutoZone. It's 20 bucks a pair. They're LEDs. And this is one that's probably four or five years old. I don't know. But I think you can see what happens. All the little scratches, the road salt, everything really... I'm sure it deteriorates the light too, which is why I replaced this. Maybe maybe the LEDs wear out too, I don't know. <clears throat> but anyway, today I want to make a protective film to keep it looking nice and shiny like this. And I'll make a couple of spares too, so when I want to, if I get right in a salt and it gets all chewed, I can just peel it up, put another one on. What I want to do is share some basic information. I had bought this roll of material, and this was supposed to be the kind of stuff that you use on automobiles and things to make to protect parts. Well, I bought this. I don't remember where I bought it, who I bought it from, but I wanted to show something real quick. And at one point in time, I had gone to, and I think it was the memorial service, one of the memorial meetups we had for Larry DeTori. And what had happened is there was somebody there that had a Ducati, a whole bike vinyl wrapped. And I was really impressed. And I, but I didn't get a lot of information because for me it wouldn't be for me to vinyl wrap a whole bike I like to paint them and so here this is I bought this material I want to show what happens with this and even if you heat gun it and you squeegee it and you do this and you do that and whatever but but what I didn't like about it that was not the part I didn't like what I didn't like was it wasn't really shiny it was no shinier in fact the way I could do it is <laughs> So I kind of abandoned this material, and I guess you could use it for other stuff, but then what happened is the next step of this, this adventure, Dave Midgley sent me this, and Dave has done wrapping. Of course, he's in the fluorocarbon business, so he has a good knowledge of this stuff. And Dave, again, thank you, and Dick Hewitt both. This is a 3M product. It's thicker than what the other material is. Let me just see if I can... Yeah, I can make a couple out of that. So let me get the cutting board and make a couple patterns and show this in real life. Now, if you try to write on this with a pen or an ink marker, eh, it's, it's not accurate. So because I want to get an accurate cut, 
This would just make sense. Take some blue tape, which when you're done cutting it, you peel the blue tape off. Doesn't have to be fancy. Any kind of painter's tape or anything. And of course, we always have plenty of tape around. But what this is going to allow me to do is get a nice, even pattern. Once I have a pattern, I'll be able to make multiples exactly the same. And I'll make a few spares, because like I said, it's, it's something like tear off face shields at some point in time. These are going to take a beating. The whole idea is they take the beating. You pull it off, and it's a brand new light again. Now, the blue tape really does pick up the line a lot better than the, the other stuff, but... It's still not exactly perfect, that's for sure. So I want to see, and I don't really remember how easy this material is to cut with scissors, but what I want to do is cut the line off so it's, it's the right size. I don't want to have a little piece hanging over the edge. I'd like to get it right up on there if I can. So now another way, and I'm going to try to show this another way, and I, well, first we'll make one pattern to see how this works out. Now these are the kind of things, a lot of times you think, ah, that's not necessary, and then you wind up looking, you got a big scratch in a light or something that bothers you, and, and some people don't care at all, so it's okay. I know with cars, Joe Roselli had a, a big piece of vinyl on the front of his little sports car, I don't remember what kind of car it was. We went up to the uh, motorcycle place with Charlie one day, and I remember seeing that on the front of his car and thinking, what a great idea. Okay, so now hopefully this is close to being the shape we need. Let's see. Now, here's what's going to be a, an issue now. I don't want to have this bigger than it has to be. So what I'm going to do is take eighth inch tape, go around it, and then cut off the eighth inch tape. Because I really don't need to be out to the very edge. I want to get it roughly an eighth of an inch in, and it looks like that's how it'll be. That'll be an easy way to do it. And this might be a little overkill for what we're doing, but as long as we have this terrible rain out there and it's supposed to go on for a couple of days so another thing I've done and I'll try to show this before the video is over is the last time we had a big storm in here for the first time in 30 years we had water in the cellar so I got this sealer and I didn't want to advertise it or even mention it until I saw how it worked but it, as of right now and we've been it's been raining for a couple hours already the, uh, so far, no leak at all, and that's we're hopefully going to put it to the test. I don't want to. I don't want to really put it to the test, but I'd like it to just not leak. Okay, so now what I can do is just trim that off. I should have a pretty accurate pattern. And what I wanted to do is get the blue tape off first, of course. Of course, this is a wax paper type of material, comes right off. And by the way, 3M makes this in a million different kinds of thicknesses. Obviously, the ones for car bumpers and that are a little bit thicker, but I think it's all basically the same material. And the stuff they use to vinyl wrap cars is very, very thin, and you can just keep putting it up and down forever. I'm not sure about this material, because when I originally did this, this material was really thick. The part I put on the R1, and I did that on video, I remember thinking, wow, this is this is pretty thick stuff. But anyway, let's see. I want to peel this off. And let's just see. Not going to know until I do it. Okay. Let's see how accurate I have it. It doesn't it isn't really that critical. But I'll make like a sunburst out of this. Start in the middle. Now you, I do have a plastic squeegee I bought to do this kind of material over and over again. So let me just do this. See if I need that. And now by taking this material off, oh, I see I have a wrinkle here, so maybe I got to use the squeegee. Eh, not really. Now I have seen people put this material, if you look at the wrapping videos, 
they they wrap it with heat guns and a million different ways. It looks like that went on without a heat gun, without anything. I don't know. And you saw it in real time, no camera cuts even. But So what I'm going to do is make up four or five of these, just have them in inventory, go out and put two on a motorcycle, and declare success. Yeah, that, that really... <laughs> Now, the nice thing is I just get my fingernail under there and, and I got a brand new headlight. Of course, the nice thing is once you have a pattern, you can use up, in this case, you can use up little scraps of material on a general job like this. Or While I have this out, I'm going to try to think of anything else that I want to protect on the bike. And, well, on a rainy day like this, uh, unexpected rainy day, having a little job like this out of the way, one thing off my list. It's only about 12 things left, but I always like to use up rainy days on doing little maintenance things like this if I can. So I want to thank John Pothia for that idea. That's, that's got the piece, the clear on it already. I have two for out in the garage that I'll put on and a spare. No sense doing this one. This is one of, that's our used lens. I'm just curious about something with this stone chip and I'm going to try it. I want to see if this material can be buffed on a buffing wheel. I don't know, but it's, it is plastic, so this will be an interesting test. So what I did, I, this is the older lens that's got stone chips in it. I protected half with tape, and I want to just run this on a, the buffing wheel just slightly and just see if that, those scratches come right out. But even if they did, what the problem is, you still have to take the light off the bike. Maybe if you buffed it while it was on with a buff, I don't know. But I know having that tape on there is a really cheap fix, an easy fix. And the reason these lights are a problem, they're down low where they pick up stones. And I've seen like some of the BMWs have the lights really down lower on the front of the forks where they're really vulnerable. Now, if you're up where the headlight is, I think it's a lot less vulnerable. But you know, this will be an interesting test. And I like, I like doing tests myself to see the result. Now I can tell you because I buffed a lot of these headlight covers like they're on my Toyota and on my Volkswagen. The material you use, mm, yeah, you, you compounds usually work and finer compounds work. Flitz works great, by the way. But, but here's one of the things. These are usually made out of some kind of plastic that if you get it too hot, it'll melt and just make a mess for you. So I've got to do this very gingerly or in a perfect world, I just do it by hand. But I do want to see, since this is a sacrificial light, I want to see if this is something that I can do with a buff and wheel or I got to do it by hand and I can just put the tape on this side and do the side the other way. We'll just fast forward through a minute or two of just buffing this on the wheel gingerly. Oh, this is pretty funny now. Now I take the tape off and I see, well, there's a pretty significant difference. I don't know if you can see it on a video. What, this side is not as, not as close as being as shiny. But what I want to try, I want to take a little mother's polish and see if that'll take some of the scratches out too. Remember, this is soft plastic. And I did the video. It's still out on the channel. To get to it, you put my name in quotation marks and fixing paint bubbles. I did a paint bubble repair on the FCR, but this is a whole different issue. And, and good painting information and good polishing information is good information, period. Now, I really always do like to do my own testing. I really don't like to, especially when you look at TV and you see an ad for something, oh, put this on your car and you'll never have to wax it again, and all these products, yeah. yeah if, and most of them are five times the price. A lot of times something very simple will solve the, the be the solution to the problem. Now, this, the problem here is stone chips. So I know, like the front fork legs on the 650, I've touched up with a little, a little brush and a touch of paint. I've built it up. I, now I have to buff it and sand it out. That'll be a future video. And that, that's something you see on a lot of bikes. But if you put that clear vinyl in the front, it may be that if you're going to flip a bike every year or two, you can get a little better... Uh, better price for the bike or just the fact that you can sell it instead of somebody says oh this bike's been track date or something because uh, I don't like to negotiate I don't like to sell bikes I like to just keep everything 
That's how I got a garage full of bikes, where the garage is too small and the bikes are too many. And that looked like it worked pretty good too. Now, you never really know. It's soft plastic. It's like headlight lenses are the same way. And this is a spare, so I'm not going to spend my whole life doing it, but I could still see the chips in it. So this would, yeah, in a non-perfect world, what, what can I say? Those lights down low are an ongoing problem. Now, I generally don't do this. I don't try to review products that I don't really know enough about, but I was in an emergency situation the last time we had a big storm, and I really had to get the job done. I really, we, had, we had a couple inches of water in a cellar, and it ruined the whole week of my life. So what I wanted to do, I wanted to just show what worked for me. And I, this is, I have not used this yet. This is the stuff you can put on when it's wet. But I wanted to buy some of everything just to make sure if we had a day like today, I would, I would have a lifeboat. But anyway, it's from Lowe's. I think this was about $10 a can. This was $25, something like that. It was reasonably priced. It wasn't hundreds of dollars. And this is the lower cell of stair. Now you can see this is a 100-year-old house. The foundation is pretty rough. But in 30 years, we had never had water. And so what I did, and we, we had water the last time we had a big storm. This... I, I, all the joints between the bricks, I filled with clear silicone, GE silicone. I let it dry overnight, and I sprayed that flex seal on. You can see it's pretty, eh, it doesn't look pretty. It's ugly, and I don't know if you can even paint it. I don't care. This is my work cellar anyway. But, but we really have had a rainstorm here today, and by day's end, I don't have one drop of water in here. So I don't know. I'm not recommending the product. I'm just saying think about it and see you can see how bad this foundation is Pieces of it. It's it's just a hundred year old house. That's the bottom line, but All I'm saying is it did save my bacon today And I'm just passing that information on just like the the chip information of paint chipping So I hope that was some useful information protect the little lights especially if you have running lights even on a car down low or like on the R1 under that belly scoop and in the future, I'm going to do more of this as a, you know, time is available. We, we're entering a part of the year where you really can't ride every day. Eh, they get these rainstorms and who knows what. But anyway, I always try to have something on my little priority list so a day like today doesn't go wasted. I don't spend all day watching YouTube or something. Anyway, that's a good little tip. I hope it works for you. I hope you did enjoy the video and thanks so much for watching. So if you're new to the channel, we do try to post something every day, motorcycle related, repairs, good information to pass on. We try to pass on uh, sharing our rides, sharing our adventures. Most of them are good, sometimes they're bad. Sometimes we do have problems that uh, are really difficult to solve, like that paint bubble on the FCR. And uh, sometimes we just do our evil twin thing and uh, get on with it. But anyway, carbon fiber repairs on my channel are exceptional. Some of the things that the maintenance on these older motorcycles, you don't see a lot of it out on, you don't see a lot of it anywhere. And we do try to post something every day. So if you enjoyed the video, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Pass the info on to your friends. And thanks again so much for watching.